very pleasant good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to O'Neill's Grill for our weekly Fan and Press Luncheon. As we're delighted to have you here watching on Facebook Live, of course, listening throughout the area, too, on ESPN 1360, WHBG, the local ESPN affiliate. Here's today's lineup here at O'Neill's. We will have head coach Mike Houston of the JMU Football Dukes as they prepare for their regular season finale, traveling to Elon this weekend. More on that in just a moment. And then Coach Rowe of JMU Men's Basketball will join us today. Uh, Coach O'Regan and the JMU Women's Basketball team on a school bus right now. They're heading south on 81 as they're venturing to Knoxville to take on the 13th ranked Tennessee Volunteers, the Lady Vols. The Dukes are one and one in women's basketball. The Volunteers one and zero with an 87-49 win over East Tennessee State. That game is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. You can hear the broadcast on ESPN 1360 AM, 101.3 FM. Dave Thomas is on the trip with the women's basketball Dukes for this one. You can also watch that on the SEC Network Plus. That's uh, an ESPN3 uh, model there. So SEC Network Plus for live video coverage of tomorrow night's ball game. For the uh, volleyball Dukes also, the CA tournament is coming up this week. It's at... Godwin Hall, Sinclair Gym, and that is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And for Thursday, the action begins at 4 o'clock. There was a schedule change, the time change, so if you look back a little ways and you see a 5 o'clock start, it is actually 4 o'clock on Thursday. That's when the top seed and host JMU Dukes entertain Elon. The Dukes are the third seed. Elon is the sixth seed. The winner of that match faces number two Towson on Friday at 4 o'clock. The other quarterfinal game on Thursday evening has number four Northeastern against number five Hofstra. The winner of that match faces top seeded College of Charleston, the regular season champions. That semi or that semifinal match is Friday at seven. The championship is at four, and that is on watch. See, uh, you can watch that on ca.tv. The entire tournament is free of charge, so get over there and watch some CA volleyball. Really, some pretty good teams in the upper tier of the CA this year. Again, the championship match on Saturday at 4. Before we get to more football, too, the women's basketball Dukes back at home on uh, Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock against St. Joe's. And looking ahead to next week here at O'Neill's, we'll have all three coaches here with us next week. We, it, the university will be closed, but we will have our weekly fan and press luncheon. So come on out and enjoy <laughs> an afternoon here with JMU uh, coaches as well as great meals here at O'Neill's Grill. Football, as I mentioned, travels to, uh, to Elon this weekend. It is a noon kickoff at Rhodes Stadium. You can hear the broadcast on the JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Dave Thomas and Clint Estes have recoverage. That begins at 11 a.m. The only way to see this is online through the Phoenix All Access. That's sort of their Matazone. You can connect through the Matazone portal. There will be a link there as they are sharing their production with us here at JMU. Uh, before we do turn it over to Coach Houston, there are three teams that are still eligible for the automatic qualifier for the NCAA tournament. And uh, those three teams are JMU, Elon, and Stony Brook. Uh, JMU, obviously, if uh, the Dukes win on Saturday, they will get the title out route and the automatic qualifier. Uh, regardless, uh, or, or if they win, then it doesn't really matter what, you, what anybody else does. Uh, JMU also will get the automatic qualifier with a win, regardless if Stony Brook beats Maine on the road. Uh, so you get that. Elon gets the title and the automatic qualifier only by beating the Dukes and Stony Brook losing at Maine. Clear as mud, right? Dukes just got to take care of business, and all that becomes a moot point. So let's bring in the head coach of the Dukes, Mike Houston. Coach? How's everybody doing? And uh, glad to be back here again this week at O'Neill's. And thanks a lot uh, to Mo and Tim for uh, hosting us again. Uh, fantastic uh, weekend this past weekend at Bridgeworth Stadium. Uh, it was senior day, and we recognized 23 of our uh, senior student athletes uh, before the game. And that group, uh, ironically, with the win Saturday night, uh, will go down as the winningest uh, group or class uh, in the history of JMU football. So I thought that was a very fitting uh, honor to, uh, to be recognized on Senior Day. And you know, it was a great, great matchup with Richmond and, 
Yeah, I think uh, you know everything that everybody expects from that ball game each year. Uh, I'm learning that it's my second one I've been involved in, and, and both of them went down to a you know last drive of the game. You know, within the final minute of the game, scoring to uh, to find a way to win. So uh, that that's the way it's going to be with those two teams. And it's uh, I thought Richmond came out and played very very hard. <clears throat> Coach Huseman had them very prepared. Uh, I thought Kyle really played an outstanding game at quarterback and. Uh, Tyler Wilkins did a great job at receiver, and I thought those two guys really made some big plays to keep Richmond in it uh, most of the night. Uh, I thought that their defense defended us very, very well. Uh, I thought that uh, our defense played outstanding, and I thought that you know really our offense uh, responded when uh, you know when they when they had to there at the end of the ball game with you know one of the more memorable drives I would think in uh, in the history of JMU football with a 71 71 yard drive. Uh, to capped off with a seven-yard touchdown by Trey, Trey Sharp with 44 seconds left uh, to seal the win. So, uh, you know, and I'll tell you what, on Sunday, I showed the kids three clips uh, at the beginning of our team meeting. The first clip I showed them was the fake field goal uh, because we talk about it all the time that you never know, you never know what play is the play in each ball game. And, uh, and certainly the backside of a field goal block, you don't think of that as being the most important thing in the world, but you know, it was on that play. And you know, Jordan Brown was there to set the edge and do his job. Kyrie Hawkins uh, was the linebacker in the hole doing his job, defeating a blocker and making the tackle. And then Curtis Oliver was there playing the pass fake and then filling once the, once the receiver blocked. So you, know, you had three guys there on that play that did their job uh, on, on a play that seems so insignificant from that side pre-snap, but uh, in, 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 in time turned out to be one of the big plays in the ball game. So we watched that clip and uh, hope that uh, drove home my point uh, with the rest of the team. And then we watched, we watched Trey's touchdown and the celebration that followed. Uh, somebody captured that from the sideline and we watched uh, the final play of the game and the celebration that followed that because you know that, that emotion and that intensity that you saw from our players uh, celebrating that win shows you the significance uh, of that rivalry to our program uh, and also you know that special you know commemorating our seniors on senior day so it was a big weekend for our program uh, a good win for our team uh, and it's, it's put us in a situation where we go into Elon this this Saturday with an opportunity to capture our second straight outright uh, CAA championship. Uh, certainly we will be challenged greatly by the number 11 ranked team uh, in the nation. And just in watching them, you know, I've seen them throughout the year on film just with, a, with common opponents. But you know, as you watch them uh, as the other team, you don't watch them as closely. But over the last two days, we've watched them very closely. And, and I'll tell you, they're a very impressive football team. And it's, it's hard to imagine that this is the same team that we played at the end of the year last year. <clears throat> and when it's not, but it's a lot of the same players. But, you know, they have a big, strong offensive line that really does a great job of getting off the football. Uh, they have a great downhill running game uh, with McNair there at tailback. I know they lost Summers uh, back about midseason, but really, you know, same style of runner here in McNair, and he's doing a great job. Uh, Cheek has done a phenomenal job as a young quarterback of running that offense, uh, throws the ball down the field very accurately, uh, can make all the throws in the intermediate and short uh, area as well. I think they have a variety of weapons at receiver. Uh, you know, they have a couple of guys that can really stretch the field. Uh, they got Weeks there in the slot that's, you know, the, 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 the quick little guy, much like uh, John Miller, uh, that, you know, makes a lot of plays, runs the jet sweeps, does things like that. You know, their tight ends are great blockers. Uh, so it's really a solid offense, and I think that we're going to be challenged maybe as much as we have uh, all year from a physicality and just being able to stop them standpoint uh, defensively. So uh, you flip over defensively. Uh, they're doing a great job running the 3-3 stack. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen it a good bit the last two years, but they're, they're running as well as, as Villanova ever has. Uh, and, you know, they've got a, a big physical defensive line. Their linebackers are extremely active. In the secondary, Blair is a very physical safety, uh, a big hitter that's involved a lot in the run game, uh, and I think they're just do I think they're doing a great job on that side of the football of making people work for everything that they get. And you know, probably the biggest thing that stands out about them uh, is you know you look back at their season, and they have they have not you know not had a blowout win, 
every win has been a close game, but every week they've found a way to win, you know, at the end of the game. You know, they've, they've, they've had a couple of overtime wins. They've had a, a game against Furman early in the year, which I think everybody understands what kind of program Furman is this year. The SOCON, where they were down 21 nothing, getting ready to be down 28 nothing, ended up coming back and winning the ball game. So they've been, they've been a, through a lot of adversity. They've been in a lot of tough situations, and they've always found a way to come back and win. So, uh, and that's a trait of a championship football team. So I think it's going to be an outstanding matchup uh, Saturday uh, down there at their place. And, uh, you know, really looking forward to the ball game, and I'm sure they are too. And uh, it should be a great, uh, a great game for all of our fans that are playing to make the trip to watch us hopefully be able to pull out a win. I guess I'll start today. Uh, David DeGuzman, TV3. Uh, Coach, congrats on uh, 22 straight wins. Coincidentally, that's Thanks. how old you turned today, right? 22? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Happy birthday, Coach. I'll um, take that. Elon, here we go. It's a team that, again, looks drastically different from last year. You mentioned a lot about the Phoenix already. And what's the biggest thing, though, that stuck out to you the most about how different they are, how improved they are from last year? Well, I think probably two things. I think one, just from a physicality and playing hard standpoint. You know, I... I think this is a team that probably, I would say probably culture-wise and philosophy-wise with the way they practice and the way they go about things, they're probably very similar to what we try to be uh, because you watch them and they play hard and they play very physical. So uh, that's something I did not think that was a, you know, apparent a year ago. Uh, the other thing I think is just uh, I think that they are very solid schematically in all three phases and you don't see things where – uh, you know, where, where there are weaknesses there, where there are things that maybe you can take advantage of. You know, I think, I think they're doing things very sound and doing them very physical and playing very hard. Tommy Keeler, Northern Virginia Daily. Can you talk a little bit more about the uh, last drive of the game with Trey Sharp and, and the offensive line? What was different from that drive from the previous drives? Is it just determination? Or? Well, I think the difference is they knew we had to score. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, that's, that's the one thing about our kids is, is they understand – they understand the situation. They understand. They understand what this game means this week, uh, and I don't think that the stage is too big for them. You know, they understood that we needed to drive down and win uh, in a huge ball game, and at the same time, it's not like they went out there uptight or nervous or anything like that. They went out there with just a mindset of we're going to get this done, and then they went about doing their jobs at a high level. Uh, now, did they have a little bit extra energy and, and momentum on that drive? Sure. I mean, I think that was apparent to everybody. But uh, I think the, the big thing is, is, is what, it, what that comes from, and I think that comes from the experience and the success that we've been able to have in those situations over the last couple of years. Greg Medea, DNR, how difficult has it been to get your offensive line to put together a drive like that? You've obviously had guys up on that offensive line banged up and you, you've missed starters at times. How difficult is, is it be, has it been to get a drive like that? Well, I think that, that just getting the consistent play throughout the year has been a little bit of a challenge with some of the injuries. You know, we lost Tyree and Jaron for the year. Uh, and then, you know, we've had a couple of guys banged up and out of the lineup at times and had some freshmen in there at times. Uh, but I do feel like, you know, probably this past week and right now, uh, we are finding ourselves being about as healthy as we have been maybe since the, the opener against East Carolina. We're finally starting to get guys. My, uh, my, my medical report is finally starting to look like uh, a little bit shorter on one side and, and guys coming off on the other, uh, whereas a few weeks ago it was, I, was, I was telling our, our athletic trainer, Geronimo, I was like, you've you got to quit coming in here. You know, I can't take this anymore. So I do think getting healthy uh, is a part of it. And the more that those guys are playing together and practicing together, because we had weeks where guys wouldn't practice all week and then try to go out and play on Saturday, and you just can't do that. Uh, so I think that consistency is starting to come around because we're getting guys practicing together throughout the week. With, I, I guess, another guy who plays a part in that is, is Jonathan Klusterman. He had a couple of key blocks on that last drive. How important has it been to get him back in a fold? Uh, it's, and it's been huge. And, that's, and he's one of the ones I'm talking about. You know, even, even when he came back, he wasn't practicing that much, you know, because of, of a variety of things he was battling. Um, but now he's finally healthy. But, you know, I know everybody talks about, you know, what a great receiver he is in the red zone and stuff like that. But he's as important to our run game as any offensive lineman we have because, you know, he's the guy that's, you know, when we, when we run the ISO stuff, he's the guy loading up on, on the linebacker inside. 
He may be the guy blocking the five technique on the zone play. He may be the guy stealing a linebacker for Brian on the quarterback keep. You know, he just does so many things in the run game. And you can say what you want. Clayton's done a great job, and Nick did a great job. But they're still young, and they're still learning the nuances, and they're not as big and strong. I mean, Jonathan's a – you know, there's a reason why he was an All-American last year. He's a solid part of our running offense. Coach, how have the last 10 weeks prepared your team to have the opportunity to win a CAA title for the second straight year? Do what? I'm sorry. <laughs> how have the last 10 weeks of, of football prepared your team to have this opportunity to win the CAA title again? Well, you know, I think probably the one thing that our, that our team does well is they, uh, you know, they don't get too far ahead of themselves. And so uh, you've heard them talk about it a lot, that, you know, for us, each game, each week is the biggest game of the year. And uh, they've had that mindset all year long. And so I think just the ability to not get, you know, too far ahead in their thinking uh, compared to this game this week. Because at the end of the day, and they know this is the conference championship, they know this is probably the number one seed in the national playoffs, they know it's for a home field event, they know all those things. But for them, their focus is not on those things. Their focus is on beating Elon, or trying to beat Elon. That, that's their focus. Uh, and so I think that's what it's got to be. It's the same thing for Elon. That's what their focus has to be. Because you can't start thinking about all these other things because you lose sight of what's important. If you lose sight of what's important, you lose sight of all the little things that it takes to achieve that goal. So I think just the way they've approached each game throughout the year is preparing them for this game this week. What are some of the biggest things that kind of stand out to you about the Elon's defense? Does, does it help that, that you've seen the 3-3 three, three stack already? I know it's a tricky defense to prepare for. Does it help that you've seen it already this year? Well, I think it certainly helps. I think it helps that we saw it you know, from Villanova. I think it helps that we've seen it you know, a couple times over the last two years uh, because it is different from the four, four man front. But uh, Actually, I think that uh, well, that's you know, being used. Coach Kirkpatrick, Coach Steinspring, the offensive we have staff, uh, they've got a good feel for you know, some of the things that we can do and some of the things that we can't do against that, uh, that, that scheme. Certainly, you know, Elon's going to have some wrinkles uh, this week that we probably haven't seen and vice versa tomorrow. Coach, you talked on Saturday about how you know, your team didn't pay any attention to the quarter and how senior leadership history has helped with that. How impressed were you about how the younger players dealt with you know, that kind of tight situation at the end of the game? Well, I just think that uh, a lot of that comes down to, again, uh, as I've talked about, the experience of our older players. And I think that, you know, especially with guys that have not been in that situation before, some of the freshmen, uh, you know, they're always going to kind of feed off of, you know, everybody around them. And I think it's important. You know, I've always felt like this from a head coaching standpoint that, you know, I don't panic in those situations, that I don't get up tight. I try to stay loose uh, because I think that they very much will feed off of me, the older players. And I think the older players with their experience, you know, the younger players will feed off of them. So I think it's just a, a, kind, of a, a, a kind of a culture thing of, you know, just understanding what we've got to do and then just going out there and doing it as if it were a routine drive. You know, everybody knows that it wasn't a routine drive or it wasn't a routine part of the ball game. Uh, they're defensively late, but you still got to do the same things well at that point in the ball game that you did in the first quarter. Uh, so last weekend was uh, senior day. Can you talk a little bit more about your seniors and kind of what they've kind of meant to the program the last couple of years? Well, I, you know, I've, I've talked several times about uh, the fact that I kind of I kind of group this 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 group of seniors in with last year's seniors, uh, in that they were the older players whenever I took over the program, and you know their commitment to us, their buying in to our coaching staff and our philosophy and 
and you know not trying to buck the system because and I, and I said it I said it last year you know most of the time when you take over a program it takes two or three years to get things started in the right direction because you've got to graduate those older players because most of the time they won't buy in they will try to you know this is the way we've been doing this you know we, the, why do we need to change kind of deal but they didn't do that uh, they they were they were you know from from the get-go they were all right we're all in uh, and we started developing that relationship of trust and believing in each other and I think it's that bond right now that's causing us to play at, at the level we're playing at so uh, this group to me is just as responsible for that national championship last year and certainly they are responsible for the performance of this program this season uh, as any one single factor. Any other questions from members of the media? Coach, we actually do have one more question for you uh, this afternoon. Just how much would you appreciate or enjoy a cookie skillet on your birthday? <laughs> well, I can promise you, I always <laughs> enjoy cookie skillets at, uh, at O'Neill's because that's the highlight of, uh, of any trip we have here. So happy birthday, Coach Mike Houston. Thanks a lot, but uh, I'd rather have a win at Elon on Saturday for my birthday. I'm so sure you would. Hope to, see, hope to see everybody there. Go Dukes. All right, Coach Mike Houston of the uh, JMU Football Dukes. We'll be uh, taking a break for a couple of moments, and we'll come back with a JMU men's basketball coach, Lou Rowe, as the Dukes prepare for the Bahamas. XLR here. 